Hello, everyone. I'm Sean Johnson East, an Olympic gold and silver medalist and world champion gymnast. Those achievements were some of my most exciting moments of my career. Today, however, I'm wearing a different hat, that of a mom to three incredible kids, which makes today's event even more meaningful to me. I'm thrilled to be part of something truly out of this world. We are joined by some very special guests today, the patients and families at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. St. Jude plays a pivotal role in how the world understands, treats, and defeats childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases. And what makes today extra special is that we're connecting with you directly from space. The crew of Polaris Dawn is currently orbiting Earth on a mission that aims not only to advance human space travel, but to improve life back here on Earth as well. They are dedicated to supporting St. Jude's vital mission through their journey by raising funds and awareness to help find cures and save children. I'm particularly excited because today we'll start with astronaut Anna Menon, medical officer aboard the Dragon spacecraft right now, and the author of Kisses from Space. This book not only shares the inspiring story of space exploration, but also the power of love to overcome any distance. Anna, will you read your book to these brave patients at St. Jude alongside your children, James and Grace? Anna, why don't you tell us what inspired you to write the book and then take it away with your reading. Hi, Sean. Hi, everyone. Hi, James and Grace. I am so excited to talk with all of you today and also get to read a book that's really special to me. This book, Kisses from Space, is a story that I wrote for you, James and Grace, to remind you that I love you and that I'm always thinking of you even when we're apart. But I'm also excited for another reason, and that is the fact that this book raises money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I co-authored this story with Carrie Vosick, and it is beautifully illustrated by Andy Harkness. And all of our proceeds are going to benefit this hospital and the incredible work that they do. So, without further ado, let's read. Kisses from Space. Gather round, my sweet dragons. Your mama is back. Snuggling close, cuddle up on my lap. I'm home from my mission. It was hard to be apart. But while I was gone, I held you close in my heart. Our family of dragons loves being together. At home, on adventures, whatever the weather. We swim in the ocean. In the sand, we leave tracks. We hike up big mountains with you on our backs. We snuggle in hammocks, watch stars in the sky, the bright constellations in front of our eyes. Then my mission to space took me far and away. I knew we were sad that you had to stay. We knew that the distance would make us all blue, so we put our heads together and knew just what to do. You put teddy bear in my suitcase. I had notes in your covers. I promised to bring back all the treasures I discovered. I dove into the sea, calmed my breath, slowed my pace. I practiced floating weightless just as I would in space. A shark in the dark taught me how to be brave. A dolphin found seashells for you in a cave. My training continued. The mountains were calling. I learned to be strong and get up after falling. I tromped and I stomped big prints in the snow. I melted ice with my breath. But grew cold, tired, and slow. Then I thought of our hikes and how you never, ever stop laughing and racing to reach the tip top. Your giggles and strength helped me climb miles and miles. I danced on the rocks and chose stones to bring you smiles. I felt so 
so alone, Mr. Snuggles, even more. Then I saw all the stars, and I knew it was time to explore. I flew to the launch pad and buckled in tight. They counted ten, nine, eight. Then at last we took flight. Up, up, and away our rocket ship soared. I bounced in my seat as the huge engines roared. Higher and higher, we rose through the sky. Who knew that a dragon could fly up so high? Zoom, whoosh, where our ship changed its pace. My wings lifted up. I was floating in space. Everything started floating, even Teddy Bear, too. Then I gathered up kisses and blew them home straight to you. I danced through the dark and high-fived the moon. I somersaulted, I flipped, and told Mars, see you soon. Next, I set off in search of one final thing, a treasure I hoped would make your heart sing. Shooting and falling, it came from afar. I knew when I saw it, I would bring you a star. Then I turned and I saw the most beautiful view. the bright, shining earth that holds all of you. I called, time to go home. So we put on the brakes and flew down through the clouds past the mountains and lakes. We gently splashed into the ocean of blue, our ship safely home, one step closer to you. I'm so glad to be back. I miss you so much. Your cute, wiggly noses, your sweet, gentle touch. I saw so many sights. I'll tell you stories for years. Now our adventures continue, my sweet dragon dear. You see, when we're apart, we're not really alone. I'll send kisses from space, and I'll always come home. Because not even the mountains, the sea, or the stars could ever compare to this family of ours. I'm sending you kisses from space, James and Grace. Hi, Anna. They say that distance makes the heart grow fonder. And you're so far away, we all miss you more than ever. Do you want to say hi? They're they're say, whispering hi so, and that they miss you, so you might not hear it. And I just lost James over the side of the couch. Say hi. Want to go say hi, James? I love you guys. I miss you guys too. That was wonderful, Anna. Thank you for sharing kisses from space with us. Now let's all send a space-sized kiss. Back to Anna and the crew. Ready, everyone? Three, two, one. Ah, that was terrific. Now the Polaris Dawn crew would love to chat with you guys and answer some questions from space. First, I'll let Anna kick it off with some introductions. Awesome, Sean. Thank you. I'm going to have my crewmates come in to the picture with me, and I will introduce them. Give us one second. All right. First up is our commander, Jared Isaacman. And then we have our mission specialist, Sarah Gillis, floating into view. And now we have mission pilot, Kid Poteet. And back to you, Sean. Yay, great to meet all of you. We have some wonderful questions. Alfonso is first up. Take it away, Alfonso, and ask them your question. Hi. Hi. Question. Okay, your question. Uh, my question is, 
what will be the temperature when you're outside in a space? Creo que le dijeron. That's a great question. When we're outside in space, you can have really big temperature extremes because you're either in the sun or you're in the shade. Um, and so we'll, we'll experience up to plus or minus 250 degrees. And it's cold right now because it's dark out there. Oh, my goodness. Thanks. That's so wild. Thank you, Alfonso. Mabry, you are up. What question do you have for them? Can you see the sunrise and sunset from space? We see the sunrise and sunset so much. We actually see each one about a hundred and every 106 minutes. So, and it is honestly one of my favorite views. The sun it peaks over the horizon and the whole world just lights up and or the whole world goes to sleep and you just get to witness this hour after hour, and it's so beautiful. Our Earth is so beautiful. That is so cool. Thank you, Mabry. John, or actually Thompson. Thompson is up next. You have a wonderful question. Ask away. Do you see shooting stars in space? Do we see shooting stars in space? There's so many things that we see. We've seen a lot of stars out there. We see the sun, just like Anna talked about. Every 106 minutes, we go through a sunrise and sunset. And you can actually see the line across the sky on Earth. One side's dark and one side is light. It's so cool. And we're probably going to be flying over your house in the next few minutes. That is so cool. Thank you, Thompson. John, what is your question? How do you stay attached to the rocket during a spacewalk? I'm also incredibly tired. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a really good question. So we have this uh, umbilical and tether that attaches to our spacesuit, and then it comes back inside our dragon here, and it's what gives us our oxygen, and it keeps us from getting too hot outside, and it gives us, like, lots of good sensor information on this really cool heads-up display that we have. So the dragon and our spacesuits really work well together, and that's what keeps us attached so we don't float away during our spacewalk. Thank you, John. Micah, Micah has the last question. You're up, Micah. Do people live in space and do you want to live in space? Well, right now we are living in space. Uh, there have been people living in space on the International Space Station for over 20 years now. Um, and someday we might even make it to another planet and get to live there. Uh, but for now, we're living in space for five days and we'll be home pretty soon. Thank you, Micah. Thank you to all the kids for asking such insightful questions and to the astronauts, Anna, Jared, Kid, and Sarah. Thank you guys for this historic moment in space. We've learned so much today and we are so thrilled to have been part of it. The families and patients at St. Jude are so grateful for all you're doing and we're eagerly awaiting your safe return to earth. I'll pass it to you guys for some closing words. Thanks, Sean. It was such an honor to get to share space with all of you guys today. I love your questions, and I love getting to read with you. We are cheering you on from up here, and we will be so excited to connect again when we're back on Earth and share stories. Bye for now.